now you know all about this piece. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to build our gusset plates. And I'm going to use 3 30 seconds plate for this which will go on there with a nice aesthetic little curve in it. It goes up onto the headstock a little bit and then we'll tie in both tubes so we'll really strengthen the head. So as you can see I've made one. First step is to make yourself a cardboard template. Just lay a piece of cardboard and I've actually measured, marked on the uh, top tube here where I want it to go to roughly. So you cut out your piece of cardboard and then you transfer this shape to your piece of sheet steel and cut it out which will move over onto the other table here and do that. Now there's a number of ways for cutting steel plate or alloy plate for that matter. Probably the best is to have a nice bandsaw but for some reason when you look at bandsaws you can look at two identically specced bandsaws, one for wood, one for metal and just because the metal one runs a bit slower they're going to charge you three times as much. So you can use all sorts of things, cutting discs in your grinder, you can cut it out with a plasma cutter if you've got plenty of money or you can use a jigsaw with a metal blade. Um, I had a little rush of blood and bought this good Bosch one and actually for those of you at home in the UK Bosch make one specifically for cutting metal again it runs at slower speed but it only runs on 240 volts so here in the States where they have a puny 115 volts uh, it's not available. So we take our piece of steel I mean this really is a simple task so I'll show you it but I don't really see anybody having any problems with it. We're all trying to uh, save our money where we can so we're gonna try and fit it in the best way. Looks like it might be that. Waste not want not. Mark it out. Like thus. Now when you're using a jigsaw, if you have the chance to do it, a really useful thing, which I did with this table, is to cut a slot. I maybe should have cut it a bit further over here, but I had something else stood on this table at the time. Then, when you use your jigsaw, you can press down nice and easily on both sides and make a better cut. So we'll cut this out. A little lubricant really helps as well. So this is the uh, high sulfur type oil, that, cutting oil that I use on the lathe. And I have found it does make quite a difference. The old safety glasses as well. You only get one set of eyes given. So here we go. why I should have done it further in to give me a little more support but hopefully I won't rush forward and slice my arm off. If you're using a jigsaw, you've got to think about your curves because you really, they've got to be quite gentle. A metal cutting jigsaw has got quite a big blade, it's not like using a, 
one of the very thin blades you get for for wood so you can't really get much too much of a curve so you've got to think of that when you're marking it out see is a lot better than messing on with a hacksaw and doing lots of cross cuts and angled cuts and a real pain. virtually never the blade virtually never catches and you have that horrible thing where it pulls the whole job up because the blade of course is cutting on the upstroke thing when you're using the jigsaw is to make sure that you think out the order in which you make your cuts otherwise you could end up suddenly finding you've only got this little bit of metal to hold when you want to cut something out so keep cutting so that you've always got plenty of metal to hold all right so that's cut out we've got to put a little bend in it so now we'll go back over to the vise now because the uh, the tube in the headstock is of a larger diameter than either the front down tube or the top tube. We've got to put a little bend in the, in the gusset plate from where it transitions from the top tube out to the diameter of the headstock. So it's about a half an inch. Now one thing to bear in mind whenever you're bending metal is that if you want it to bend there, if you put it in your vise there, and then start pounding on it, it's actually going to bend further up. It's going to bend away from the line. So you've got to make sure that you take into account the curve and the, the thicker the steel, the more curved there's going to be. So we'll put this in the vise and just as the uh, carpenter always measures twice and cuts once, we're going to look to make sure we put the bend in this the right way. We want it to bend on that line so we won't go quite all the way into there. We'll give it that eighth of an inch. Hopefully you're not having the top of my head cut off as I saw there was when I was doing the, the jigsawing. I know you all want to see me because I'm you know Yorkshireman and noted for being good looking. So anyway we'll just um,
give this a little bit of an angle. And we'll see if this fits. I don't know if this is on camera, but... Set it up with the other one. Make sure they're going to about the same place. Actually, we want it to be a fraction more there. Can't beat belting things with a big hammer. There we go. So now we're all ready. We can bronze these in, so let me move the camera so you can see what we're actually going to do. Well, once again, I see that my little bit of bending, you didn't get to see my head, you just heard this uh, disembodied voice. But as you're probably more interested in seeing the work than me, I'm not going to worry about it anymore. So here goes. Now we're going to fit out two pieces of plate. They go on like so, and then as I've mentioned before, we always have that awkward time of actually holding things in place while you do your bit of welding. This time I'm going to use one of these clever doodads here. If you don't have one of these, and what I've done in the past is, you can drill a half inch, uh, sorry, half inch, a quarter inch hole in both of these pieces of plates and just put a bolt through, put a nut on and tighten it up and actually clamp them onto the frame there and that will, uh, that will hold them in place. Then what we need to do is just position them exactly where we want them so we can tap them around. Well, they're just held like that. Got a good view of the old flat hat there, didn't you? That, by the way, is courtesy of my daughter, who is back in the UK. Though, unfortunately, she's decided to live in County Durham which as everyone knows is a minor county and doesn't really have a proper cricket team but you know what youngsters are like but she does have a good eye for hats so that looks to me to be where I want it so what we're going to do now is a little experiment I bought a welding glass which I'm going to put in front of the camera uh, so you can actually here I am again you can actually see me doing the bronzing rather than just that long distance very bright shot you got before so let me set the camera up and then we'll lay this flat to make the bronzing easier and we'll put these plates on all right Let's see if my bronzing is better than my filmmaking. As I noticed in the last segment, you only got half the side of my face, so now I know why cameramen get such high wages. Alright, let's get some warmth into this.
and I hope you can see this all right. As I say, it's a bit of an experiment. And even if you can't see what I'm doing, you know what I'm doing, so we're halfway there. Who knows, 20 years from now I might be making good films.
the green and we'll see what it looks like. Bit of smoke, but apart from that, looks to me to be pretty good. And here you can see the finished bronzed in gusset plate. I'll uh, get technical and zoom in here so you can see the weld. Little ripple marks in it. And you can see the way that it actually flows into the joint, particularly along the top. That curved shape. It's a really, really strong joint. So let me zoom even further back and we will finish talking about the frame. Taking the precaution of making sure you can see all of me at this point. All right, so the frame basically is finished now. We've got a couple of uh, brackets to put on, but generally I like to do them when I've got the engine and the wheels in and it's, it's standing there and I can see more where I want them to go, things like the footrests and so on. So we'll leave this for now as the frame done and the next stage will be to shorten the swinging arm, which we will make a complete video of. So thanks for watching these so far. Um, I notice the views are going up and I've got a number of subscribers for which I thank you very much. And we'll hope, as I say, that the films get better as we go along. And we'll take it from there. Thanks again.